Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Tammy and Phil, for the invitation. I'm going to briefly present the safety and efficacy of bariatric surgery in patients with type 2 diabetes, and I'm going to briefly talk to you about the procedure selection in patients with type 2 diabetes. So how safe is metabolic surgery? So this graph shows the U.S. national data of post-op complication rate of eight different procedures in patients with type 2 diabetes. And as you see, the composite complication rate after the gastric bypass is about 3.4%, which is comparable to hysterectomy and lap coli, and is significantly less compared to lap api, lap colectomy, knee arthroplasty, infrainguinal bypass, and cabbage. And <coughs> this graph shows the trend of mortality of these procedures in patients with type 2 diabetes between 2008 and 2012. And as you see, the mortality rate of gastric bypass has been persistently low on the range of 2,000 or between 2,000 or 3,000, which is almost one-tenth of mortality of the cabbage or uh, peripheral revascularization. So it does make sense to do these procedures to treat diabetes to prevent doing those uh, very morbid cardiovascular procedures. To date, there are 12 randomized clinical trials comparing surgery versus medical therapy for treatment of type 2 diabetes, which consistently show superiority of the surgical intervention in treatment of type 2 diabetes compared to the medical therapy. I'm going to briefly uh, show you data of two randomized trials which provide us the five-year outcome. First is the SAMPI trial. Uh, we published five-year outcome last year. Uh, 150 patients were randomized to gastric bypass, sleep gastrectomy, and intensive medical therapy, and were followed up to five years. Here is the A1C data. Both surgical procedures were superior in terms of reduction in A1C and BMI compared to the medical arm. Diabetes medication at five years, you see in the medical arm, 40% were taking insulin at the end of the study versus 12 or 11% after the surgical procedures. and after gastric bypass, 45% of patients were off any medication at the end of the study versus 25% uh, after the sleeve uh, were off medication, and majority of patients on the medical arm were taking uh, diabetes medication. Adverse events were relatively infrequent and benign. The next RCT was published by Mike Mingroni and Robino, uh, published in Lancet, so they randomized 60 patients to gastric bypass, biliopancreatic diversion, and the medical therapy. And diabetes remission rate at the end of the study was significantly better after BPD and gastric bypass. Both surgical procedures significantly improved cardiovascular medications and cardiovascular risk. And the diabetes surgery study, DSS study, which was recently published in JAMA, randomized 120 patients to gastric bypass and medical therapy. And as you see here, gastric bypass was associated uh, with better A1C, systolic blood pressure, LDL, and weight loss compared to the medical therapy. Here is the meta-analysis of those randomized trials. And as you see, the odds ratio of achieving the glycemic endpoints of each study was 8.4 favoring the surgery compared to the medical therapy. And the mean difference of the A1C uh, was 1.1% uh, favoring the surgery. Based on this high quality study, which, was, which were published in the recent years, now bariatric surgery has been placed in the al treatment algorithm for type 2 diabetes by uh, major international diabetes organizations. So briefly in patients, uh, who are severely obese, bariatric surgery should be recommended. And in patients who are less obese, with low BMI, with BMI between 30 to 35, if, the, if, the, if diabetes is not adequately controlled by medical therapy, bariatric surgery should be considered. How about the end organ complications? How, how about the effect of the surgery on the end organ complications of diabetes? So we just showed this data yesterday here at the SAGES. So we followed 101 patients who got bypass and sleeve years ago at the Cleveland Clinic. All patients had albuminuria, and we showed that in long term, uh, in half of the patient albuminuria resolved, and in 
uh, between 75 to 80 percent albuminuria improve in long-term follow-up. Here is the post-hoc analysis of the SOS study. It showed in pre-diabetic patients and in patients with full-blown diabetes, bariatric surgery can reduce risk of microvascular complications up to 20 years after the surgery. Gastric bypass can reduce the long-term risk of CHF and severe cardiovascular disease. And we predicted risk of uh, complications of diabetes on 131 patients with type 2 diabetes who got gastric bypass between 2004 and 2007. We followed them for six years, and we could show that the gastric bypass can decrease the risk of coronary artery disease, stroke, peripheral vascular disease, MI, nephropathy, retinopathy, intermittent claudication, and cardiovascular mortality. How about the quality of life? That's the important parameter. So we basically do this procedure to improve quality of life and improve survival. So both Stampy trial and Mingroni and Robino trial showed that these procedures can significantly improve quality of life compared to the medical arms. How about the effect on long-term mortality? Today there are 37 published studies on the uh, effect of these procedures on survival. And all the studies consistently, except one, showed that this procedure can improve survival compared to the uh, control group who did not get the surgery. Here are the list of studies. I'm going to skip those. So basically, the reduction rate in, in mortality is, is about 40, 50 percent consistently. This is the, the most recent one from Geisinger Group in the United States. Uh, which showed that the gastric bypass in patients with diabetes decreased the car cardiovascular mortality, uh, diabetes-related mortality, uh, pulmonary-related mortality, and all-cause mortality. I'm going to briefly talk to, uh, to you about the procedure selection in patients with type 2 diabetes. We know that there is an efficacy and risk gradient for these procedures that we routinely do in our practice. So basically, Malabsorptive procedures are associated with better weight loss and better diabetes control, but with higher risk. So overall, gastric bypass and a sleeve gastrectomy are very well toler tolerated procedures with acceptable risk-benefit ratio. And based on the current estimate of procedures in the United States, these two procedures account for more than 95% of procedures in patients with type 2 diabetes. So, what would be our, our criteria to, to choose one of these two for patients with type 2 diabetes? Let's take a look to the randomized clinical trial, data from randomized clinical trials. So we have three trials which compare gastric bypass with sleeve gastrectomy in patients with diabetes. Stampy trial, which was published last year, and two recent trials, sleeve pass and stem bus trial. If we look at the table here, so long-term diabetes complete remission, which was defined as A1C below 7%, uh, below 6% without diabetes medication, you see that the, these p-values were not significant. And if we put together all data together, we see a trend, so gas remission rate, complete remission rate after gastric bypass was 34%, after sleep was 25%, but the p-value was not statistically significant. But there is something there, but the sample size probably was not adequate even uh, when we put together all the, all the trials. So then we uh, developed a, this scoring system, which is called Individualized Metabolic Surgery Score for the procedure selection based on the diabetes severity. So we uh, included 900 patients from the Cleveland Clinic and the center in Barcelona in Spain. Those patients got sleeve gastrectomy or uh, gastric bypass between 2004 and 2012, and we've, all the patients had diabetes, and we followed them for at least five years. And then we identified four independent predictors of long-term diabetes remission. Uh, you see this nomogram. In this nomogram, pre-op number of diabetes medication and pre-op uh, duration of diabetes are continuous variable, and pre-op insulin use and glycemic control are categorical variable. So patients' total point on the nomogram represent the individualized metabolic surgery score or IMS score. Then we identified cut points of 25 and 95 and categorized patients to three stages of diabetes severity, mild, moderate, and severe. In patients with mild disease, both procedures were highly effective 
in achieving long-term diabetes remission, but gastric bypass was a bit better in terms of uh, reduction in number of diabetes medication and <coughs> it was a bit superior in terms of rate of di uh, complete remission. On the other end of the spectrum, in patients with severe disease, both procedures were less effective in achieving diabetes remission in long term. There was an intermediate, moderate group in which gastric bypass was highly superior compared to the sleeve gastrectomy. So based on this uh, nomogram, so we, we can suggest a procedure in patients with type 2 diabetes. So if a patient has mild disease, both procedures are very good, but since gastric bypass is a bit better, so gastric bypass can be suggested as a procedure of choice. In patients with moderate disease with IMS score between 25 and 95, uh, gastric bypass is highly superior to uh, uh, sleeve gastrectomy and is highly recommended as a procedure of choice. And in patients with severe disease, when all beta cells are burned out in the pancreas, then both procedures are less effective in achieving uh, long-term diabetes remission, sleeve gastrectomy, which is a less risky procedure, would be a better choice. Uh, so we made an uh, app, the, the calculator, which is called Bariatric Calc and available on App Store and Google Play, and you can freely download it and you can use it in, the, in your routine practice. Thank you very much.